Sometimes natural processes lead to rocks that look surprisingly unnatural. This week, Perseverance discovered a rock composed of shiny spheres, some with holes that look remarkably similar to beads. So how did it form? On this episode of Mars Guy, Perseverance is descending the rim of Jezero Crater, a giant hole in the ground formed by an asteroid impact nearly 4 billion years ago. It's currently investigating light and dark tone bands that were interpreted as rock layers based on orbital images. But now that interpretation is questionable based on how they look on the ground, which I reported in the previous episode. Here's Mars Guy for scale. The day after I posted that episode, Perseverance drilled into a slab of light tone bedrock and extracted a core sample that it promptly managed to seal. This is a notable contrast to the challenge of sealing the previous sample. Among the small chunks of dark tone rocks scattered across the scene is one that looks notably freakish for its clearly abnormal texture. It resembles a piece of oolitic limestone on Earth, but the color is notably different, and more importantly, Perseverance is not exploring a beach setting, which is where oolitic limestone forms. Compositional measurements by Perseverance can easily rule this out, or in, which would be a huge discovery. The small telescope of the SuperCam instrument provides a really great zoomed-in look. This shows nearly perfectly spherical grains, but also elongate ones and some that are relatively angular. The ones with a single tiny hole are especially intriguing as are the ones that look like they were smashed in or deflated. These features distinguish them from the famous Martian blueberries, the spherical grains of hematite discovered by the Opportunity rover in Meridiani Planum more than 20 years ago. Perseverance drove several meters to investigate one of the darker bands evident from orbit. Here it observed even more rocks with spherules. And this time it looks like they're part of the bedrock rather than just sitting on top of it. Geologists would say that they're in place rather than float rocks, which is important for interpreting their origin. Being on the rim of an impact crater, my first thought was that these are impact spherules, features recognized on Earth to form during large impact events. Perhaps the most famous example is the Chicxulub impact about 66 million years ago, that led to the extinction of dinosaurs and many other animals and plants. The size of this event produced layers of spherules all around the globe, including a site off Colombia that has remarkably well-preserved examples. Impact spherules form from molten droplets of material ejected during impact and then falling back to the ground, during which time they acquire their shape. During flight, they can degas, form bubbles, and impact with each other, creating plastic deformation. This explains the holes and smashed-in look of some of the Chicxulub spherules and makes a strong case for a comparable origin of the spherules observed by Perseverance. Rapid quenching during their fall forms glassy material with a shiny luster, something also evident in the Martian spherules. So an impact origin seems like the best explanation. But then we have to ask whether these rocks formed from the Jezero impact or from an earlier impact and then were dredged up by the Jezero impact. A good candidate for an earlier impact origin is the gargantuan Isidus impact basin. Jezero crater formed on what essentially is the rim of that crater basin, which must have had huge amounts of impact spherules and the rocks that formed from them. But now that Perseverance has found spheral-rich rocks in what looks like a layer of eroding bedrock, an origin as fallout from the Jezero impact seems more plausible and less of a freak of nature.